As our observational equipment improves, we are starting to see more and more exoplanets around stars. As we discover more and more of these, the mystery continues to deepen about how planets form around stars. One of these growing mysteries is the fact that red dwarf stars are the most common type of star in our galaxy. They are thought to be small stars, some as small as one tenth the size of our sun. Despite this small size, some have giant planets that orbit them, some as big as 10 times the size of Jupiter. Does this mystery around how these planets form, coupled with the protoplanetary disks, reveal a signature of an electrical stressing event akin to a micronova? These large planets around small red dwarfs presents a big problem as giant planets are thought to form in a gradual buildup of dust and particles to gain a progressively bigger body. Red dwarfs are tiny stars and do not seem to have enough material around them to form such a large planet. A team of scientists have attempted to simulate the evolution of a protoplanetary disk around a red dwarf star. These disks are large structures of gas and dust that seem to surround some stars and these are believed to be newly born stars. They were able to model scenarios where if the disk was big enough they could fragment allowing the formation of the gas giants in a very quick time frame compared to the standard model. This model also predicted that these young planets would be extremely hot making them easy to observe and we have actually been able to observe many of these hot Jupiters around small stars. So that's the case closed, right? Well, no. Let's first rewind a little and discuss red dwarf stars in an electric star model. These would be stars that have wandered away from the central pinch point of a Birkeland filament, or the overall Birkeland current is receiving less energy. This means that the tufts are much smaller, it is less electrically active, so the chromosphere and the corona are far less active. Consequently, the part that we would see as glowing is much, much, much smaller, making us think that the star is smaller. When in fact, it is just that we see less of the glowing plasma compared to the brighter stars. So the size of the planet surrounding a red dwarf has no relevance to its apparent size. If they have a large planet, this may indicate a significant electrical stressing event in the past either ejected material or caused the star to fission, splitting in two unequal parts to manage the massive increase in incoming electrical current. Now, This more than likely occurred while the star was in a more active part of the pinch, possibly when it had a much bluer colour and was visibly more intense. By removing a large part of the positive plasma in a lump, or splitting, it is able to reduce the overall stress in the star. And this would mean that this planet would appear hotter, especially if it still shared part of that incoming current. Over time, as the star wandered away from the pinch, or if the incoming current density decreased, the star would change to a red dwarf, and the hot Jupiter would cool to be just a large Jupiter-like planet. But this still begs the question about the protoplanetary disk. The simulation they performed did indeed show it is possible to create large Jupiter-like planets from a break-off part of this disk. But the link between the disk and the new star for me is not clear enough, but there is still value in what they have done. And this comes back to the role that gravity might play in all of this. We see many examples of protoplanetary disks. We even see some with what clearly looks like planets around them. We also know that stars have ring currents. We see disk formation around, for example, Saturn, and we have seen experiments by Christian Birkeland which show plasma rings around a charged sphere. When stars become electrically stressed, they can emit material like a CME, but in extreme cases they can also discharge from its equatorial ring current. And we see this in, for example, the ejected material from SN 1987A, which was a supernova explosion. So what if there was something in between these that does release a vast amount of material along the equatorial region only? This cloud would then encircle a star, and if the cloud was large enough then it would be possible that the scenario that they simulated may occur. It could also be that the planets we see in these images are either ejected along with the material, or formed from this material, 
or they were there before the material was ejected. It reminds me that I need to go back and look at planet formation, as I still believe there are many different ways that this can occur, but I think that these protoplanetary rings provide a piece of evidence that to me suggests some electrical stressing event, like a micronova, may have triggered in this star. This may not always lead to the formation of new planets, and there may be other mechanisms for this happening as well. So from the highest scale electrical stressing event we would have a supernova, where the star is pretty much left broken afterwards as either a neutron star or a pulsar. And this is a one-off event. Then we have a nova where a large portion of the star's material is ejected outwards as an expanding bubble. These may repeat regularly over time. Here we need to consider how the star might be positioned in the filament. Is it moving in an orbit around the central pinch point, meaning it is receiving a higher input current periodically? Or is it possible that the nova event removed enough charge to balance it for a period of time, so slowly this builds up until it explodes again, a bit like a capacitor? Then we have the micronova event, where a smaller portion of material is ejected, and my proposal here is that this might be what we see as the protoplanetary disks. And lastly, we then have a CME event, where a small portion is removed from the surface of the star. Now we obviously also have the fissioning event where the star would split into two potentially unequal bodies. And these may well occur alongside both the supernova, the nova and potentially the micronova event as well. Further work needs to be done to try and link these different concepts together. As always, be brave, be curious. The truth is waiting for us. Until next time.